I want to welcome you to the Prodigal Son Podcast. You know, we do this podcast six days a week, and we do this for a reason. We do this so people can see and understand and, and get a grasp on just how much God loves them, just how much He cares for them, just how much He's for them. And and I want to thank you for tuning in. Hey, listen, I want to ask a favor. I want you to uh, share these podcasts on your social media. You know, people people have no idea that that God is a good God, that He's He's for them, not against them. There's millions upon multitude, millions of people that walk the face of this earth today that don't know that. They do do not know that. And the Word says, the Bible says that the the goodness of God that is what leads men to repentance. And and I want to get the word out about this. I want people to see and understand that 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 they can count on Him. He's not a tyrant. You know, I lived for years thinking God was a tyrant. I really did. I, th- I thought he was a, a some bipolar, just crazy old man that sat on his throne with a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for me to mess up. But that ain't God. That's religion. And and it's, it's it's sad to say, but it's some of his religious people. Now they're out they're out to jump you every every chance they get. But but that's not God. And this podcast is done every week for that reason for for to let people know and understand and realize that God is for them. Oh, I thank God that he's for me. He was for me when I was out in the world, backslid, away from him, out of his will, because I didn't know what I know today. And and we want to spread this word, spread this good news throughout the world that we live in for people to see and understand just how much God is for them. People don't realize that, and and it's a shame. It really is that that people have an outlook that uh, that you know God is just a just unpleasable. That's not God. That's not God. But I, like I said, I want to ask you to share these these uh, podcasts on your social media. Share them everywhere you go. I mean, people are being set free all over the world because people like you share these podcasts. They're free. Don't cost anyone anything. All they have to do is 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 tune in and download them. There, there's there's hundreds of them now. We're working almost. We're getting close to a thousand podcasts, and it thrills me to be able to say everything that on this podcast is free. Oh, I thank God for that. And you know why we can do that? Because we have faithful partners that partner with this ministry to help us do just that, to give these God's Word away free of charge, to give these podcasts away to anyone that will listen. I want to openly thank all the partners of the Prodigal Son Podcast. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom through this ministry, through this podcast, helping people see and understand that God's a good God. Glory to God. Share these podcasts on your social media. My prayers for you come out of Paul's prayers for the Ephesians. You know, Paul wanted the Ephesians to see and understand God's love and have their eyes open to it because, you know, just then and and just like now and this time, you know, people don't realize. People don't realize how much God loves them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. 
God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God that he has opened my eyes to his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. And that is my earnest prayer for you and everyone else that walks the face of this planet today, that you would come to understand the love that God has for mankind, just how much he loves them. You know, I said this yesterday, and I I want to, if you'll go to my Facebook page, it's T. Stacy Hayes, and, and look at that picture on there that I put of uh, of what how the world re- perceives God and how God really is. That's a, that's a testament to the goodness of God. Glory to God. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through. Lord, I thank you for all you're doing, all you have done, and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. You know, uh, we touched on this this scripture yesterday, and I just feel like I need to go back and 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 talk about it some more. You know, this this week for the you know, the last few weeks, well, for the life of this podcast, you know, we we talk about who we are as Christians and who we are as as born again children of God and but but just for the last few weeks, it's been really on my heart to to let people see and understand that if they will they will speak to God and, and, and act like God's word is true because it is true. They'll see their lives change. And, and this is one scripture that, that has just, you know, it changed my life when I started taking it and, and, and believing it and standing on it and, and, and finding out that, uh, you know, I was a new creature. And it's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And I want to read it in the New Living Translation. It says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Do you hear that? This means that anyone who belongs to Christ. How do you belong to Christ? How do you belong to Christ? If you're in Christ, you're a new person. You're a new person, but how do you belong to Christ? How do you, how do you get into God's family? This is this is the easiest thing in the world to do, and I know I know I do I knew I, I do a invitation on every one of these podcasts, but a lot of people don't realize when they asked Jesus Christ into their heart and into their life by faith and and spoke him as Lord over their life and believe that God raised them, raised them or raised him from the dead to, to save them, they don't realize and understand the benefits of that. They don't realize that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he makes you a new creature. He, he, he paid for every sin that you've ever committed, past, present, and future. And if you will forever keep this scripture on your mind and understand that, look, when Satan comes to tell you that, oh, you're this and oh, you're that, you know, we was talking about it the other day uh, of, of uh, 
condemnation, shame and condemnation that religion and religious people and, and Satan himself wants to put on you so that he can keep you down where you can't be used, where you can't be strong. But if you can get the realization of, of just this one scripture and, and come to understand that you're a new creature in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it'll change your life. It will change your life. Let me read this in the, uh, in the King James Version. This is a really good illustration of uh, this, this scripture too. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ... How do you get in Christ? You get born again. It says, He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Old things are passed away. That means that all your your mistakes, your past sins, the the uh things that you were you were <laughs> made to feel shameful and condemned over have been forgiven you. Jesus died for you, and he died to pay the price that you couldn't pay. He paid a debt that you couldn't pay. And when he done that, he made you a new creature. And in essence, there's not a person on this earth that cannot be a new creature with one statement and one profession of faith. And that is when you're born again. You can become a new creature. Now, I'm not telling you that you're going to change on the outside. If if you're blonde headed and blue eyed when you when you uh, get born again, you're going to look the same as you did before you were born again. But God will put you put a new heart in there. He will He will see that that your inner man is saved is born into the family of God, your spiritual man. When And, and it, like I, I've said this over and over on this podcast, but when I was a young man in my early 20s, I was born again. And, and Satan had me defeated before I got out the doors of the church, literally. He had me convinced that I couldn't live the life that... I had committed myself to live, and I struggled for almost a decade trying to do that, trying to do what Satan was telling me that I couldn't. And 10 years later, after I was born again, I was back out on the street doing the same thing that I was doing before I was born again, and worse, a a whole lot worse. But the shame and the condemnation uh, that was continually, continually, the first eight, ten years of my Christian life that was continually put on me and, and me not knowing the, the, that I was a new creature, not knowing these truths that, that we talk about every day on this podcast, me not knowing those truths pushed me away from God. And uh, people perish. What? What? Are they, how do they perish? For lack of knowledge. <laughs> I mean, listen. Peer, listen to me. Lack of knowledge will cost you dearly in the carnal world that we live in. Lack of knowledge will cost you millions of dollars over a lifetime. If 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 you know you don't if you don't know a lot of things, but a lack of knowledge will cost you an eternity without Jesus Christ or a lifetime on this earth living way below your standards if you're born again. If you're born again and you don't know a lot of these truths that's being preached on this podcast every day, you're living way below your standards. You're living way below what God wants you to, how God wants you to live on this earth. You see, if you don't know that you're a new creature, you're easily convinced that you're just an old sinner saved by grace. You ever heard that before? I heard it for years. I heard people say it for years. I've heard people stand up behind the pulpit and say, I ain't nothing but an old sinner, just a worm. And and let, let me explain something to you. God didn't make no junk. God didn't save you. 
for you to stand around and and be long faced and 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 take take a beating, a brow beating by every religious person that walked through the door. He didn't save you to put you in a place that that you couldn't be used. He saved you. He saved you so that you could be a tool in his in his army and in his family and 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 help him to do in other people's lives what he done in yours and that's to save them. I'm I'm telling you. I've t- I've said this over and over and over again. There's people in this world that you will meet that I'll never lay eyes on. Never. Never see them, never meet them, never get to talk to them, but you will. And there's people that I meet. There's people that hear this podcast that will never see you. But what I'm what I'm getting at, just because you're not called to preach, does not mean that you're not called to minister to people around you and be that light, that light that I ask God to help me to become over and over and over again on these podcasts and help me be that vessel that he can speak through. People, God wants to to use you. And you say, boy, I ain't much to be used. Yes, you are. If you're born again, if you're born again, you're a new creature. And God wants to, to be part of your life. And he wants to speak through you and help you to be a light to somebody, to to help your testimony become a light in somebody else's life. You're a new creature. Know that. Understand that. And don't ever forget it. Don't ever let the devil talk, talk tell you that, that you're not. You see what I'm saying? So many people run around this world, and I was one of them, thinking that God's an unpleasable old man, old bipolar old man, sitting on his throne with a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for me to screw up. That ain't God. That's religion. That ain't God. That's some of his religious people. I mean, there's a lot of well-meaning people out here on this earth that that drive people away from a relationship with God because they think God's like they are. And and he's not. He's not. And I ain't throwing off on nobody. I I love people. I want to see people change. But some people just don't know how to present the gospel to people. They don't know that the goodness of God uh, leadeth men to repentance. They think they need browbeat every time they come around them. No, I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to reprimand somebody for doing something that I don't do. I'm just not going to do it. It's not my place. Billy Graham said it the best. He said, "It's it's God's place to judge. It's the Holy Spirit's place to convict. See, a lot of people, a lot of people you know, they like to judge and they like to bring people's sins up to their face so that they can bring them under conviction. No, they're trying to bring them under condemnation. And what we ta- what was we talking about the other day? Uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Billy Graham said it's God's uh, place to judge. It's Holy Spirit's place to convict. And he said it's my place to love. So I've got a question for you. Are you doing what Billy Graham said he done? And that's love people. And you may, say, you may be listening to this podcast and say, boy, there's a lot of people out here in this world that I find hard to love. Well, join the club. You know, I'm not, I don't, I don't like to keep company with some people, but I'm going to love them regardless. May have to love them from a distance. But but I, I'm going to do my best to do that. But I'm going to tell you something. If 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 you're not born again, that's a key ingredient to finding the the love of God that He has for all people. You know Romans ten and nine said, "If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and you've never been if you've never been born again, being born again is the doorway into God's kingdom." In Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says, Thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. 
And then you'll come to understand what Paul is talking about. You can have your eyes opened. You can have your eyes opened before you're, before you're saved. All you got to do is get in his word and start reading it for yourself and reading it and saying, this is, rich, this is God speaking to me. But when you become, when you, when you're, when you're born again, you can look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 and says, I am a new creature. I am a new creature. And, 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 and in Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Come to understand that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And, and he'll change your life like you've never seen it changed before. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, I want to I want to uh, ask a favor. Share these podcasts on your social media. Share these podcasts so people can see and understand that that God's for them, not against them. Share these podcasts so they can so the people that on your social media pages can come to realize that there's free free. God, for, there's a, a podcast out here that is free, giving the Word of God away to anybody that'll listen. Oh, I thank God for the testimonies that, of people that have been set free through the truth in God's Word. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. If you've got a prayer request, send it to me. Send it to me. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need Him to do in your life. If you need... If you need uh, a prayer, send me your prayer request, and I want to send you scriptures that you and I both can agree on and stand on and believe that God's going to take care of those requests. I'm going to agree with you that he will, because he will. Oh, I thank God for the truth in his word. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, if you're, if you're a, a partner of this ministry, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry. Thank you for all that you do sowing your finances, your prayer time, anything else that you're doing for this ministry. Thank you. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return on everything that you sow into God's kingdom. Hey, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into God's kingdom today. Talk about it, think about it, pray about it, and ask Him what you should be doing. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.